14 on certain modern writers and the institution of the family. The family may fairly be considered, one would think, an ultimate human institution. Everyone would admit that it has been the main cell and central unit of almost all societies hitherto, except indeed such societies as that of the Lacedaemonian, which went in for efficiency and has therefore perished and left not a trace behind. Christianity, even enormous as was its revolution, did not alter this ancient and savage sanctity. It merely reversed it. It did not deny the trinity of father, mother and child. It merely read it backwards, making it run child, mother, father. This is called not the family, but the holy family, for many things are made holy by being turned upside down. But some sages of our own decadence have made a serious attack on the family. They have impugned it, as I think wrongly, and its defenders have defended it and defended it wrongly. The common defence of the family is that, amid the stress and fickleness of life, it is peaceful, pleasant and at one. But there is another defence of the family which is possible and to me evident. This defence is that the family is not peaceful and not pleasant and not at one. It is not fashionable to say much nowadays of the advantages of the small community. We are told that we must go in for large empires and large ideas. There is one advantage, however, in the small state, the city or the village, which only the willfully blind can overlook. The man who lives in a small community lives in a much larger world. He knows much more of the fierce varieties and uncompromising divergences of men. The reason is obvious. In a large community we can choose our companions. In a small community our companions are chosen for us. Thus, in all extensive and highly civilised societies, groups come into existence founded upon what is called sympathy and shut out the real world more sharply than the gates of a monastery. There is nothing really narrow about the clan. The thing which is really narrow is the clique. The men of the clan live together because they all wear the same tartan or are all descended from the same sacred cow. But in their souls, by the divine luck of things, there will always be more colours than in any tartan. But the men of the clique live together because they have the same kind of soul, and their narrowness is a narrowness of spiritual coherence and contentment, like that which exists in hell. A big society exists in order to form cliques. A big society is a society for the promotion of narrowness. It is a machinery for the purpose of guarding the solitary and sensitive individual from all experience of the bitter and bracing human compromises. It is, in the most literal sense of the words, a society for the prevention of Christian knowledge.